Right, so um, final steps to completing this phase um, and to bringing it to completion. So let's um, turn to the other camera. So one of the things to notice is as the paint dries, it does actually change um, both in color and in, in the way in which it rests with everything else. So um, it's always a good thing to, to, to come back to it and then sort of ask yourself, well, does it need a bit more? For example, maybe I need to put a little bit more into here of the, the lighter color. Just to unify that side of the face. carefully just sort of bringing that side of the face all up together I'm using hatching lines for this So that's created that sort of radiance going up around here. And I think I need to bring a little bit more up to here. So that radiance is really connecting around the, the face there and focusing in on the, um, that in there like that okay so we've now got just about everything on that face in position and I can now move towards the final highlights um, and shadows and things to to really just sort of make it sing. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the eye. And I want to put in a thin, thick, thin line around there. One, and then just a secondary one there. Now, what you what do you mean by fat over lean, um, Pineda? Back over this now, just to strengthen that. No, you don't add any more. That when you make your paint, it's always the same all the way through. You're just mixing enough pigment with egg so that you get uh, a, a sort of single cream consistency, and then you add more water. Um, depending on the effect you want. And it doesn't matter. I might put a washy layer and then a more stronger layer on the top. That's okay. I might do it the other way around. 
that, that there's no rules about sort of um, oh because you put a washy one on you have to you can't put a a, a, a more solid layer on it's, it's quite flexible right now then I'm going to take some yellow oh sorry I'm going to go back to the eye and I'm going back to my vermilion and just in the corner of the eyes here one two like that okay so now i'm going back to my um yellow and white but this time I'm going to make a very much lighter mix. So I'm going to start here and draw light into that corner. So just thin thick thin thin thick thin so just to about there and then another line next to it another line another line just reducing inside as it goes along then going to curve that under there a little bit then just in the middle and that top of that highlight you see this middle line here right in the middle at the top and then just down a little bit don't take it all the way along because if you do that you really will um, flatten it So now you see you begin to get those ripples onto the to the face but they're not um i'm just strengthening these now on the nose thin thick thin And then top of there. And then on this wrinkle here, just one little bit there. And then just one bit at the end of that little stroke there. And then here, slightly up. So there's a gap between the eyebrow, the dark bit of the eyebrow, and then where you're putting these three little lines just to to raise that up to here again onto that little ledge around there like that and here You see how these little lines just suddenly bring it up to life. Um, can I ex oh, the question is there's is an amazing effect of the initial application looking a bit too bright and then it settles or transforms into luminosity. Can you explain this effect? Um, one, the camera is um, distorting things a little bit. So you 
true to life, this is true, but it's not so dramatic as it appears on the camera. Um, and it's as I was saying, the as the paint dries, it sort of settles into what's underneath it. Um, and that sort of process by which it it's changing um, is part of, I think, its natural qualities. Um, and so you're playing with the capacity of the, the paint by by using it in this way and it, part of what you've got to do is have the patience to allow the tempera to to do its stuff and not to sort of get impatient along the way and think oh it's not looking right and you sort of begin to get a bit discouraged um the most important thing is to And what is next to it, as you mentioned earlier? Next to, to what? There's two little lines there on the ear, just brings it out. Ah, yeah, if you have a darker colour next to a brighter colour, like here, because that's so much darker, it's making that appear brighter. So we're we're playing with um, the the way in which the colours sing to each other, and how a darker colour makes a lighter colour seem even lighter. Whereas if you put the same colour next to a another lighter colour, it might actually make it look darker. Now then. Now there you can see it's really beginning to, yes, the mouth, just those few lines and suddenly it really comes alive. That's where having, having done all your hard work um, and allowing it to, 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 to have a foundation enables just those few lines at the end to really do, do their stuff. So I'm now going to use almost a pure white line for the final highlights. So I'm not putting these on every single line, but just within the existing lines. So that makes it with the lights really flowing out of the 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 eye there. Just those two little lines there. So now you've got this wonderful dancing effect in the eye. Just a little bit. Now on to the nose. Same bright, thin, thick, thin, very calligraphic. And then end of the nose there. That little bit there.
Now that's Go back with a little bit of it. Now you see this side of the mouth here um, does have a slightly lighter line, but it's not the the same white that I put on here. It's um, slightly lighter. And I'm, um, it's not exactly pure white. It still has a little bit of, of the yellow in it. And this is uh, zinc white. I don't use titanium white on the face at all. Just, um, just zinc white. I find it with the face especially, it, has far more, it's, it's much more gentle pigment. Now, that's about right. I, I'd, I'd let it settle. Um, and I'm sort of sitting back looking, closing one eye, squinting a little bit to see if it's holding together if there's anything obviously that's not working. Looking at the original, I think I can put a little bit more in there now. Bring that up. So maybe now just a little word um, about what I'd do with the face next. Um, I would give it a wash over of 50% um, egg, 50% water, just to help fix it. Um, I think one thing I might do actually is to now go over the, those red lines on the side of the face. To strengthen some of these. The original they seem to have used a slightly darker uh, red um, on but so see how that strong line is is really giving it yeah 50 50 egg water solution um the same as on the original so i just follow on the original so i might change it or develop it slightly um but for your purpose i think stick with the with the the original model um now on that up, upper lip sorry i needed i wanted to do i just mixed a little of the vermilion with a little white so it's a little pinky and then i'm just going to work that middle bit a little bit more like that then wash that same color actually over the the bottom lip like that just gives a little bit more it says does the 50 50 mixture have the effect of softening the transitions from light to dark also is the 50 50 application only to be applied in the last stages. Um, 
the effect of the wash is um, to enrich the colour. It's almost uh, like a bit of a varnish. Um, in fact, I, I might as well do that for you. I'll show you the effect. Um, so it doesn't, it won't affect the, um, I'm just looking for, I suppose that's a size six brush that I'm going to use to do this. So I've mixed up my, um, let me see there. This here is my 50-50 egg mix. And I'm just going to go over the surface like this. Now, you can do an egg wash if you think your pigments are a little too powdery, the paint's a bit too powdery once it's dried and it will just nourish it and um, feed, the, feed the pigment and enable it to, to stick. So you see the egg is just sort of pulling it together like that. There we are. So see how it's sort of pulling it together. Um, and that that's looking okay. Maybe just um, let me show you the color uh, to go on the on the red garment. Um, you can see that I've sort of um, put the that, that shadow in using um, Caput Mortem. I'm now going to use um, a red ochre, just a, just a normal red ochre. I'll do this quickly as the time is uh, disappearing. Just because for some of you, I think this would help. Now, red ochres are really aggressive pigment so just be aware of, of that before we put it on and I'll use that big brush again actually so let me put this up a little bit so you can see that so And I'm putting it on in the direction in which the garment falls so that any of the overlap of the, the paint will um, create tram lines as though they were actually folds in the garment. So I'm using the translucency to the same effect. So you see that's giving that sort of directional flow. Um, I really think my I'm going to put my cloth on, but I can avoid the face by doing this. So you see how I'm putting this on a 
following the the way I'd want the the garments to to flow. And let's not forget that little. in there so you can see how the shadowing is coming through and it's um giving form to the garment you see how that that side is now beginning to so again pulling with the the fold down here. So you see how that is giving that sense that the, the garment is really sort of hanging over. So, so if I just take this off here and I can give you a little bit more of a view. So you see how those strokes are creating that sense of a, of, of, of a flow. And because of the underpainting, it's creating the shadows for me. So So see, now these bits I'm going to have to tidy up, but no, it's just a little bit of dust. <laughs> I want this to be more of a, a purpley color. So the next thing that I would do is to give it a wash of blue. So to knock back um, the, the redness or to create more of that sort of royal blue, um, I'd be more likely to do that. But you see how that face is now framed by the, um, by the, the red garment. I need, it needs another layer to, to bring it up, but we're into our less than a minute now. So folks, thank you so much for being with me on this um, little journey with Our Lady of Sorrows. 
Thank you very much for being so patient and appreciative. And for those of you who, who um, were kind enough to, to, to make a donation for the course, that's very much appreciated. So I hope to, to, to see you all fairly soon. I will um, write to all of you, um, let you know what's happening, and um, I'll keep you on my list of, of um, people who might be interested in the course. So God bless everybody and take care.